Well, Love is Blind Season 4 is officially in the books. The not-so-live live reunion is now on Netflix for you all to stream. But we're not done with talking about Love is Blind because Micah just went on the Vile Files podcast and talked a whole lot of, well, Paul, Jackie, Marshall, Josh, Arena, and one of her bridesmaids. Yeah, let's get into it. What's going on, you guys? James here with some real news and another real recap surrounding, yes, Love is Blind Season 4, guys. Listen, I've had the time of my life on this channel covering Love is Blind Season 4. The commentary, the comments down below, the engagement, all of that has warmed my heart, so I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in for my Love is Blind coverage. Speaking of which, you can find all of those links down below because if you're clicking on this video, that means you're interested in my Love is Blind content, so you're not going to want to miss out on all of that. But today, it's all about Micah going on the Vile Files podcast. It's like a tongue twister with Nick Vile. Uh, that's how you pronounce it, right? I hope so. He's a of Bachelor Nation fame. You probably know who he is if you're a reality TV fan. But this was an hour and a half tell-all by Micah in a way. We'll talk about why I enjoyed some parts, why some parts were disappointing, and some other parts uh, I just did not believe in the slightest. But before we hop into my recap and my review of everything that kind of happened in this podcast, if it is your first time here at the channel, welcome to Real James, where I love talking about movies, TV, and all the news in between. So if you do too, and you love Love is Blind, hit the big red button below, subscribe to the channel, tap on that bell, and hit the thumbs up button for more content just like this. Because even though now we gotta wait for season 5 for Love is Blind, we got some more reality TV to talk about on the channel, right? Just give me some suggestions of what I need to be watching a new season of in the comments. I mean, I know Jewish Matchmaker or Matchmaking is coming up soon. Uh, we got the Ultimatum's new season coming up. So we got a lot of stuff to cover and recap here on the channel. All right, y'all. So let's waste no more time. I'm ready. We're going to dive into everything that Micah talked about and spilled the tea on with Nick Vile and his other two co-hosts. So, um... Let's get started. First and foremost, I gotta ask y'all, what kind of shoes was Nick wearing during this interview? They're like Uggs, sort of. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I mean, not my fashion taste. If he likes it, we love it, I guess, but it was quite interesting. Now, getting past that, <laughs> Nick opens up this interview in the same way he did with Marshall earlier this week by asking one simple question, how's your heart? And Micah says something that's very telling. Micah says it broke again after watching the episodes back from this season. So, listen, I know some of you were saying in the comments, I don't believe it, crocodile tears, this and that during the reunion. But I'd have to imagine that she probably did feel a bit heartbroken here. Now, do I believe that she would have said yes if Paul said yes? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of going back and forth on that, but it's tough to tell here, uh, especially after some of the stuff she says in this interview. So right after all of that, we get into the wedding day tea and all the drama because y'all, I thought it was a decent lead up to the ceremony. Micah seemed happy. And then there were some comments like, I'm a little unsure of what I'm going to say, but <laughs> it's drama building up for the cameras. However, uh, Micah and Paul did not have themselves a good time before the ceremony. Micah tells Nick that her confidence was, and I quote, in the dirt when she got to the altar. She was not confident at all that she would leave a married woman. <sighs> Goodness gracious. I mean, Paul was wearing that broken heart uh, button-down shirt at the reunion. He might as well get the matching pair of pants because that's got to crush him when he hears this back. Micah follows that up with saying that she was actually crying the entire morning leading up to the ceremony. Maybe the producers expertly crafted their edit around that because it didn't seem like she was crying the entire time. There were some tears, especially when she sees her parents. But man, crying the entire time sounds awful. I mean, not only was it raining, because I guess Seattle, like you guys told me, but she was bawling her eyes out. I don't know, y'all. So they stay on the topic of their relationship just a little while longer, and Micah says that Paul was never sure about them together. I mean, they even went as far as to have a conversation off camera when, you know, they stopped filming in Mexico where Paul apparently sits Micah down and asks, are we really going to get married? I mean, hmm. 
Paul. See, I know Paul went on the reunion and a lot of people were kind of in his corner, you know, oh, just let him be. Oh, come on, Vanessa, you know, she's digging in. We won't talk about Vanessa Lachey. However, Paul, it seems like he does overthink a lot and also kind of says things to dig himself in a hole. And if it is true that he told Micah and asked Micah, you know, are you really going to get married? What? Bro, you proposed to her in the pods. What do you think she's going to say? Of course. Such a weird question to ask. Micah then says that she was willing to take the leap to get married, even though that conversation happened, and you know, there were some complications to the relationship leading up to the ceremony. And then Micah says something that actually kind of shocked me a bit. See, I figured during the reunion, Micah saying she would have said yes was sort of a front, you know? But her getting on a podcast in a more intimate setting and telling Nick that yeah, I would have let Paul be my husband. I would have said yes to him if he said yes. I don't know. It, a part of me thinks like all of these things leading up to the ceremony, the crying, the tears of confusion and dismay, and you would have still said yes, Micah? Come on. Come on, Micah. Is your nose growing, Pinocchio? I don't know. And speaking of Paul and Micah in front of the cameras, Micah made a comment and said she wasn't keen on filming and performing for the camera. Actually, neither her or Paul were okay with all the PDA in front of the camera. Hmm, but you were okay with the PDA with Kwame at pool. <laughs> at the pool, at the pool party. <laughs> Girl, we have the receipts. Where are you going with that? Okay, I get it. Maybe you don't want to be with your partner intimately in front of the cameras. Fine. But she made it sound like they didn't even want to hug. You know, Nick made a comment about like a, you know, their relationship seemed very like friendly, but not in a romantic friendly way. Almost like they'd like, you know, pat each other on the back. Is that what he said, guys? <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Micah's saying all these things and then the whole thing at the pool party. Yes, she does bring that up. And you know what? You know what? We might as well get into the pool party now. However, I have two little notes that I made here before we dive into the pool party. I don't necessarily know why they went off on this almost 15 minute tangent on two things. One, Paul's height and then the height for men. And then another tangent. They started comparing the other contestants that advanced past the pods to their celebrity lookalikes. I don't care. This was very much giving Nick and Vanessa Lachey hosting vibes, Nick. I'm very glad uh, Nick Vile decided to turn this around. But for a minute there, I'm thinking, haha, the Lacheys have infested the Vile Files podcast. I don't know. But luckily, they do move on and make another interesting note. There's many interesting notes here. So, okay, last note before the pool party, guys. I think it's very weird that Micah confirms the contestants were allowed to describe themselves physically in the pods. I'd imagine every Netflix executive is probably taking off their headset and lowering their glasses thinking, who are we firing for this? Because how are you not telling the contestants you can't describe yourselves physically in the pods? Love is blind. Can you love somebody without seeing them first and get engaged? But if you tell them everything about you physically, you're painting a certain picture and expectation. I mean, do you think this is why Irina was a little disappointed in Zach physically? I don't know. But still, she was foul anyway. I just don't necessarily agree with that. It sort of hurts the integrity of the show. Man, whenever season 5 comes out, they got a lot of retooling to do. Okay, fine. I hear you loud and clear. We're now going to transition into Kwame and Micah at the pool party because she was coming with some facts? I don't know. Some things I kind of believed and some I didn't, but Micah tried to reinforce that before I dive into this, she said, Kwame and Chelsea, they definitely seem to into each other outside of the producers and their edits. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I think Micah's writing for Chelsea here and trying to support them, but <laughs> I think Kwame does not want to be in that relationship. I don't know, y'all. Uh, from one man's perspective, uh, I will tell you that Kwame is very much giving a I'm trapped vibe with Chelsea every time we see him. So I just don't know. I Micah can think what she thinks, but girl, we see the video. So then Micah confirms that she was absolutely drunk because we couldn't tell <laughs> from the video in that episode. Micah even said that she was so intoxicated that Kwame could have been Paul for all she thought in that moment. What an excuse. Clearly. 
one is melanated and one is not. So, <laughs> Micah, unless you spill tequila in your eyes, I, I don't know how you <laughs> couldn't really see that. So, Micah eventually kind of comes down to reality and says, you know what, or back to reality, and she says, listen, it was disrespectful to both our partners that that happened. I'm glad she took accountability for that because she doesn't necessarily take accountability in other areas in this interview, but in this instance, she took accountability for being very disrespectful to both Chelsea and to Paul. So yeah, you know, listen, that, that was a messy situation. We talked about it here on the channel, but I just, I don't know. It went on for too long for me to think that it was just oh, you know, maybe they were just talking about other things and they, one thing led into another. No, I think that they wanted to have that conversation, hold hands and start to uh, explore things maybe in their minds. Listen, listen, I'm just saying it was weird. So, um, Kwam, I'm sorry, Micah says that Kwame uh, was not someone she was interested in after the pods. Again, Micah says one thing, the video shows something else. So in my opinion, y'all, I think Micah was feeling Kwame. And then after she sobered up, thought to herself, you know what, let me try to make things work with Paul. However, hmm, leads me to believe that the conversation that Paul and Micah had when, um, you know, they talked in Mexico, are, you know, are we going to really do this thing? Are we going to get married? Was that a sober or a drunk conversation? Because if it was a sober conversation, she might have just went to the bar and said, you know what, that freaked me out. I'm going to drink this away. So, again... Maybe in season five of Love is Blind, we don't, you know, allow open bar to be open bar for long. So Nick Vile then transitions to a question that Micah kind of couldn't answer. And he asked about Chelsea and Kwame. So he asked Micah, in your opinion, if you had to bet on Chelsea and Kwame lasting, would she? Micah says it's tough to say, but eventually continues to ride for Chelsea and says, yeah, I think that they'll last. But it was so unconvincing. I was watching this on YouTube and I thought... <laughs> Chelsea, I mean, I'm sorry, Micah, <laughs> Chelsea is not going to cut you if you say no. Well, you would hope, I don't know, Chelsea seems a little intense sometimes, but for the most part, it didn't seem like a confident, yes, I'd bet on them lasting forever. I just, I don't know, y'all, we will be paying attention to the aftermath of Love is Blind Season 4 on the channel, so if there's any updates, we'll, we'll chat about it. So we finally get into the most interesting segment of the podcast where Nick Vile then asks Micah, how are you picking your friends? <laughs> Homie just went straight for it. He said something without saying it. Basically, Shelby is a snake, all right? What are you doing surrounding yourselves with little snakes, you know, water moccasins amok? I don't get it. <laughs> like. Micah, we've been trying to tell you, girl, get new friends, but she is clearly standing ten toes down on the fact that, well, I'm going to ride for Shelby and my bridesmaid, who, well, you know the story. In this segment, Micah confirms that her and Arena are surprisingly friends, even though they had that conversation during season four at this restaurant where Micah essentially says, you better stay away from my man and I'm not friends with you. And that's when Arena was like, mm, fine, <laughs> I'll see about that. <laughs> stupid i know but micah you know i do believe her and the reason i believe her here is because she is riding for arena in this segment literally trying to then you know push back on zach a little bit even though micah had the opportunity to push back on zach in the reunion and didn't really do what she did in this podcast micah said zach was just too much for her during the reunion and she also says that zach plugged his instagram so and i quote she asked who's in it for fame now it's getting a little catty in these streets, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I will tell you, though, she makes a decent point. I, yes, I know it pains me to say this, you guys, but Micah makes a point. Zach is saying, we're all, like, we're in this for fame. You were clearly in this for fame arena and trying to maybe, you know, take himself out of the equation that he wasn't in there for fame. But he did plug the fact that his Instagram had receipts. So what did everyone in myself included do after the reunion went to his instagram so you can imagine he got a decent uptick in followers after that reunion micah then called out zach again later on in the show for his comment that other girls said micah never wanted to marry paul this is where i was very mad during the reunion at vanessa lachey because i believe zach was going to then explain possibly 
who it was. Or maybe we would lead into a certain line of questioning that would allow us to figure out who it was. But instead, Vanessa Lachey cuts off Zach as he's speaking to then transition to something absolutely dumb. <laughs> please, please fire her as host. We need a new one. So moving on now with the topic of Micah and her friends, Micah then tried to explain herself when it comes to the whole Amber crying in the pods situation. Micah is good at giving excuses apparently because this read to me completely as an excuse. She said, I couldn't see Amber crying. I mean, the way that producers edit things, sure, they can take me laughing at a certain moment and splice it right after Amber crying, but girl, we saw the footage. You clearly not only heard her crying, but I don't doubt that you could have seen her wiping her tears or sitting down right across the room. It, it's not, it can't be the biggest room in the world. I don't know, guys. You let me know down below in the comments. You believe her here that she couldn't see Amber crying? I don't, I don't, I don't get it. And then she follows it up with something that totally destroys her argument. Not only does she blame production, but then she says, well, maybe I was nervous laughing. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. You can't go ahead and say, oh, I didn't see Amber crying. Oh, okay, maybe I was nervous laughing. That means you either heard or saw her or both. Nah, man, we <laughs> we're, we see in between these excuses, girl, come on. And then Nick Vile and his co-hosts begin to basically say in a nutshell, Micah, you need to start finding better friends. But Micah just continues to push back because what does she do next? Defend Shelby and what Shelby did on her wedding day. You guys remember that moment Micah, hears I don't, walks down the aisle, leaves, escapes crying, hands in face, and then Shelby's laughing, yucking it up with her other friend, Snake number two, and says, ha, this is exactly how I wanted it to happen. Like, girl, are, are you kidding me right now? That is just the worst thing. You wanted this to happen? I was actually really happy Nick Vile brought it up during this moment in the podcast and said, if she said something along the lines of, ah, this is terrible, I hate that she's crying and running away on her wedding day because she was rejected, however, this might be best for her in the long run because Paul is just not it for her. Fine, that's cool. But Shelby meant what she meant, so apparently Micah confirms that her and Shelby watched the episode when it aired live on Netflix, and Shelby basically explained to Micah what she really meant and what her true intentions are, and Micah believes her. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped, and this is one of those instances. So Micah, go ahead, be friends with Shelby and your bridesmaid who got her behind tapped by Paul. Oh, speaking of that, let's transition. So Nick Vile, being his messy self, brings up the Paul and Micah bridesmaid bud tap and also shows the video, if I'm not mistaken, from TikTok that was taken. And, uh, well... Let's just say I still think it's very suspect what happened between Paul and the bridesmaid. I was on a live stream recently with Sharonda from Paraweight, Chris from Tate's Takes, and Kristen Maldonado, and I know the consensus was, that's a reach, but I keep kind of seeing that clip being played and used in different TikToks, and now in this podcast episode, and to me, I don't know guys. His hand comes out of his pocket and just like whips to the side, like trying to keep his balance. That was Micah's excuse in the reunion. I, I don't buy it for a second. I'm so sorry, especially because Paul was double tapping and liking Micah's bridesmaids photos, but not just any photos, her bikini photos. I don't know. And then Micah said something that I'm not sure if many of you caught, but she said Nick Vile was just reopening the wound which implies to me that she was hurt by the video. Micah seemed to be deflecting, trying to almost protect and shield one of her best friends, but I don't, I don't buy it, guys. Micah said, of course, she spoke to her friend, and her friend reassured her that there, were no, there was nothing there. I would never get into bed with that man, Paul, who said no to you and is now single and on a reality show on Netflix. Why would I do that? <laughs> So now it's time to talk about Micah and how she reconfirmed that they dated again after the wedding. Apparently it was Memorial Day weekend and she said yes that her and Paul hooked up and it didn't really go anywhere and it was actually Micah that called off, you know, their little fling uh, a second time around. I'm just very confused, like Micah of course, why they hooked up after their wedding. 
To me, it seemed like Paul was possibly taking advantage of a very vulnerable Micah in this instance. Now, of course, it was consensual, right? But emotionally speaking, it's almost like he knew, in a sense, what he wanted. Uh, he'll get it in, dip, and then that's it. He's out, right? So I just, I don't know. It felt weird. It was suspect to me the behavior by Paul because he did come across in the reunion as, well, someone who was calculated and I don't really see Micah as a mother, which is something we'll get into soon, and dogging her. So how are you going to dog somebody? Like, you clearly made the decision to hook up with them after your wedding and saying I don't, so what's up, homie? And yes, Micah did bring up the fact that she's actually still very mad at the comments made during the reunion by Paul, where Paul said he couldn't see her being a mother because she's not nurturing, and he couldn't see marrying her not next year or in 10 years. Paul, that's just rude. Okay, um, we're going to call a spade a spade. That was rude. And I have noticed this, uh, you know, when it comes to co-workers and some friends growing up. And when they get out of a relationship, they just put the other person down. I, I don't... Why? What is the reason to smear her name on television? I almost said live television, but we know how that went. So, it, it didn't really rub me the right way. It was really weird. So, in that, this instance, I do feel bad for Micah because, listen... You got to speak life into people. And if you don't have anything to say in terms of speaking life into them, especially in a moment like this, maybe it's best to just move on. You know, don't don't say things like that. You know, power of the tongue is it's, it's powerful, man. You can you can speak life or death over someone's situation. So why are you telling Micah, I can't see you as a mom? That's really offensive. OK, OK, but I digress. Let's dive into the final two topics here, one of them being the mean girl edit during the reunion. Micah said that that section kind of dampened her experience overall on the show because she believes that she's not a mean girl. But <laughs> I hate to break it to you in the pods, Micah. You are very much being a mean girl. You were definitely being a mean girl. You and Arena were like, uh, gosh, you, you got Draco Malfoy and his psychic in the pods. Come on. What are we doing here, man? This is just, it's a way to try to rebuild your reputation. I get it going on these podcasts and stuff and clearing your name, but there were many chances that Micah could have just said, I'm out. But at times, Micah was almost instigating and getting Arena to go and make fun of people like, crying or feeling emotional. And she was very much laughing at Jackie, too. It was just very odd to me. So I genuinely think that in the pods, Micah was a mean girl. But, you know, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt here. I think she's grown from that. Hopefully. And lastly, the Jackie Marshall Josh love triangle. Well, that was brought up as well. Micah, just like all of us, said she was very shocked that Jackie and Josh didn't show up to the reunion. Uh, Jackie apparently was boasting all the way up until the reunion and taping that she was going to spill the tea, bring the tea, and the only thing she brought was an empty seat on the couch because, girl, she was not there. So, listen, Jackie and Josh are cowards. I'm sorry, you didn't show up to the reunion, you're a coward. You didn't want the smoke. However, Micah, it almost sounds like... Micah knows or knew more than she let on in this podcast. I see you, Micah. Can, can you do a little another tell all on Instagram Live or something? We'd watch. And with that, they went into their outro, said thank you, and ended the episode. So, yes, guys, the interview during the final stretch was pretty darn boring, but everything else I thought was pretty interesting. Just like with Marshall's interview, it's great to get the perspective from the contestant outside of all the fanfare and the reunion, so you get them almost decompressing and being more, I guess, willing to let things off their chest. So it was cool to hear from both Marshall and Micah. Still, I am questioning Micah and some of her excuses when it comes to being a mean girl in the pods. I, again, that doesn't really, I don't buy that. I also don't necessarily buy that she would have said yes to Paul, especially now knowing she was crying the whole morning leading up to her ceremony. And again, Micah needs to find new friends. So that's that. That's my recap and a little bit of my thoughts, or actually a lot of my thoughts, on the Vile Files podcast, the Going Deeper interview with Micah. So if you enjoyed that, guys, again, don't forget to hit the big red button below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you don't miss out on any new videos, movie reviews, reactions, and so much more. And also, can you comment down below? Can you let me know what you thought of 
this podcast episode and if you haven't watched it i mean i pretty much just described it all to you but if you want to watch it for yourself it's out there on youtube as well and like this video y'all you've already stuck around this far i appreciate your support a like would go a long long way all right y'all well until the next bit of news comes out i can't wait to sit down record some more content i got a big big review coming very soon uh does guardians of the galaxy volume 3 ring a bell for you because i'm watching that very shortly Alrighty, y'all. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you at the next screening. Man, I, I still have not de-stressed from Season 4. Does anyone have any advice? <laughs>